everyone. Welcome again. So today's lesson will be on shipwrecks and salvage. And in the previous lesson, I brought up the topic of cathodic protection, uh, just in passing. So today's lesson will focus on what is pr cathodic protection and how do we use it in marine environments. Okay. So if you look here, there's this big metal silver chunk in the middle of this other metal. And that's what we call a sacrificial anode. And we'll look at that in a minute. And we can actually use that to protect all the steel around it. Okay, so we're going to look at how that works um, as we go through this lesson. So cathodic protection is essentially a process in which you make the metal that you want to protect. So let's say this, the hull of a ship, you make that metal the cathode of a galvanic cell. Okay, we want to make it the cathode. Since most metals oxidize, by turning the protected metal into a cathode, you prevent the oxidation process from happening. Because remember, what happens at the cathode? Well, reduction happens at the cathode. Oxidation only happens at the anode. So if we force the metal to become a cathode, there's no way that it can oxidize, because that's not what happens at a cathode. Okay. So cathodic protection occurs by pumping electrons to the metal you want to protect. So what we have to do is we have to take electrons from somewhere and pump them onto the metal that we actually want to protect. So the hull of the ship or you know, the pylon in the ocean or something. So we, want, we need to put electrons onto that metal. So we can do this in two ways. One, we can use a sacrificial anode, as I mentioned earlier. So a sacrificial anode is a metal that's more reactive than the metal that you want to protect. So if it's iron, we want to pick something like zinc or magnesium, something more reactive than iron. And what happens is it will react with the electrolyte. So let's say we put it in the ocean, and it will oxidize um, in the electrolyte. So this oxidizes and generates electrons, which flow to the protected material. Okay, so it, we generate electrons by oxidizing this sacrificial anode, and those electrons go onto our um, the metal that we want to protect, and that forces that metal to become a cathode. Okay. Alternatively, if we say don't have access to zinc, pure zinc or pure magnesium, but we have a good supply of DC electricity, so maybe like a solar panel or something, then we can put electrons onto our cathode or onto our protected metal by attaching it to the negative end of a DC power supply. Okay. And by doing that, it it pumps electrons onto the, the, protected, the metal that we want to protect, forcing it to become a cathode, making it um, protected from oxidation. So we call, when we use a DC power supply, we call this impressed current protection. So um, by impress, it's forcing electrons um, from, a current, from a current source or voltage source onto the protected material. So the electrons at the cathode cause any of the cathodic material, which is oxidized, to reduce and to, to return to its original state. So if some of the iron, for instance, has already oxidized, the presence of those electrons will cause those Fe ions, or ferrous ions, to turn back into iron solid. So it can actually convert them back into um, solid metal. So what are the applications of this cathodic protection process? Well, cathodic protection has a number of uses, obviously. We can protect ships and docks from corrosion by the sea. So docks, ships, anything that's submerged in the water, we can help protect with this cathodic protection. And we also use it to protect some steel roofs from corrosion from the rain, because the rain is a little bit acidic. So we don't want um, our steel roofs from corroding just because it's raining. Um, so we can use it there too. Okay. So this summarizes our um, well, this is the introduction. To, this is the conclusion to the introduction of the cathodic protection. So we looked at what cathodic protection is, and what are the two main methods of achieving cathodic protection. Okay. So in the next lesson, we'll see about more in detail about what's actually happening in cathodic protection. Um, so I look forward to. So we'll move on to the question segment, and then we'll see if we can answer some questions. So which statement explains the process taking place at the cathode in cathodic protection? Okay. So the ion structure is reduced as electrons travel to the cathode. 
and act as oxidizing agents. The iron is protected from corrosion. The electrons travel to the iron structure, making it the cathode. Water is reduced as well as any iron ions that form. Or the iron structure is made the cathode, but iron is not reduced here. Therefore, the iron is protected. Well, C is the correct answer. The electrons travel to the iron structure, making it the cathode. Water is reduced, or any iron ions that have formed are reduced back into iron solid. Okay. Explain how cathodic protection works in terms of electron flow. So cathodic protection protects iron and steel structures by forcing the iron component to become a cathode. Okay. Electrons are sent to the iron either by an electric power supply or by oxidizing a more reactive material. These electrons reduce the water or any ferrous ions that form allowing the metal structure to be protected. So it preferentially reduces water or other iron ions before uh, so stopping the the iron structure from oxidizing instead. Describe the advantages and disadvantages of sacrificial anode cathodic protection compared to impressed current cathodic protection. Okay. So what are the advantages of this sacrificial thing? compared to impressed current. Pros. Sacrificial anodes don't require a power supply. That's good, because not everyone has access to a good supply of electricity. It's relatively cheap, because zinc and magnesium are quite cheap metals. And because there's not as much actual components, it's just a piece of wire and a piece of magnesium or zinc, we have a lower chance of failure, because there's not as many components. The cons? Well, the anode has to be replaced periodically. And over time, that could accumulate costs. Only a specific number of metals can be used. So magnesium and zinc are common ones. And the voltage range is not variable. So we can't control the voltage like we can with an impressed current system. Okay. So question nine. Explain why galvanizing steel can be thought of as a cathodic protection. So why is galvanizing steel cathodic protection? Well, the zinc coating oxidizes preferentially to the steel. So that's exactly what cathodic protection is. A material oxidizing preferentially and then forcing the steel that we want to protect to become the cathode. This oxidation forces electrons onto the steel, making it a cathode. And that's the same process as cathodic protection. And it allows the steel to be protected despite damage to the zinc coating. Explain why the choice of anode is important in sacrificial systems, while in impressed current systems, it is unimportant. So in sacrificial systems, the electrons are created by the oxidation of a metal. Okay? This metal has to oxidize preferentially to the metal being protected. So if it's iron, this anode material has to oxidize before the iron. Therefore, it must be more reactive than the protected metal. Okay? Now, in an impressed current system, the electrons are generated by a power source. Therefore, the only condition on the anode is something fairly stable and electrically, con electrically conductive. So it has to be able to conduct electrons. But other than that, that's it. There's no other conditions other than its stability. We'd like it to be stable. The choice of anode material can be very arbitrary. So many times in ships, they just throw in old engine parts that they don't need anymore or are, are not usable anymore, and that can be the new anode for the system. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on cathodic protection. It was an introduction to cathodic protection. So in the next lesson, we'll look at what is the actual process and what are the reactions that are actually occurring in cathodic protection? So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.